When I was 20, I was out of a job and didn't have any university or plans on going to university. I was basically lost in limbo without knowing where to turn next. I was living at home and spent hours on the internet staying up all night and sleeping all day. I was always a bit of an introvert that preferred the company of me, myself and I, staying up through the night and disregarding the day was a way out of the norm and avoiding people altogether. Then I got the, the classic talk from my dad that all kids get when they're useless, sitting at home doing nothing. I was tired of hearing it, so I decided I needed to move out to continue my lazy, antisocial behavior. I have family way up north in the sticks. There is nothing around except a couple sawmills and a couple nickel mines. My grandfather has a piece of property that is over 350 acres of unexplored bush. It was hardly farmable, just a giant section of woods, streams, ponds and rock. My grandfather has a timeshare in Florida, so he was gone for the rest of the year. I called him and asked if I could go up there to live. In exchange I would do lumberjacking for wood to sell and use. I remember his comments exactly, yeah, I don't give a shit, you're wasting your time up there. No work, no school, no people, no internet. But if that's what you want, go ahead and knock yourself out, just don't burn down my fucking house. My bags were already packed, I knew he wouldn't mind. I told my dad what I was doing. He was pretty much speechless and had a look of concern. He then told me I was wasting my life and should go to school. I told him it was what I wanted and needed to do. We parted ways. I got into my 93-foot Civic hatch that had a shot suspension and bold tires and took a 14-hour car ride to no man's land. I was happier than a pig in shit. I made myself good and comfy when I got to the house. It was given to my grandfather by an Irishman that passed on. He built the house with his family in the mid-1800s as a kid and been there ever since. If you ever seen the Amityville Horror. It looks just like that house but much, much smaller. The stove was an old, black cast iron beast. The kind you only see in movies or on an old historic village tour. It had a large barn full of tools and an old JD tractor, a smokehouse for meats, a large veggie garden, an outhouse and a chicken coop that wasn't in use anymore. After unpacking and relaxing, the distance and fact I was alone began to set in. There wasn't a TV, internet or video game in sight. Luckily my grandfather had two snowmobiles, a four-wheeler, a gator and dirt bike, and lots of hunting rifles and shotguns to boot. I figured most my time would be spent outdoors, which was okay, but I was a bit nervous. The next day I drove into town, if you could even call it that. I stocked up on canned goods and covered food that could survive a nuclear holocaust. I came back and got to lumberjacking. It was slow at first to remember everything my grandpa had shown me as a kid, 8 to 12 years old, but after 4 or 5 hours I had it down pat. I'd take the tractor, chains and hooks, a jerry can and chainsaw to the bush. I'd find a cedar or spruce tree, cut it down. Chain it up to the tractor and drag it off to the main trail where I had a normal flatbed trailer waiting. I'd then cut it up into 2 to 3 foot sections and stack it. Once the trailer was full, I'd tow it to the barn, where in the back was a large, hydraulic wood splitter. I'd split it into four to six sections depending on diameter of the piece. Once I cut it all, I stacked it all. This was the routine. It was long and hard work, but it gave me a purpose and gave me joy. I thought of myself as a pioneer. I was in the great outdoors, alone, taking down trees and supplying villagers with something they needed to survive. I felt proud of myself, and made cash doing it. While I wasn't getting rich, I had enough for all the amenities that were needed to survive in such a place. I kept this routine for months, and locals began coming to me for wood because it was cheap, and I was a youngster looking after my grandfather's home, who was well thought of in town. Then winter came and everything went to shit. Winter on the farm was one of the most depressing times of my life. Not being able to do much work and have no interesting human contact or internet really brought me down. 
I reflected on my life and the fact I had no friends anymore because I had abandoned them with no warning. Why I did this, I do not know, but I had some type of mental feeling that I had to leave everyone behind and never speak to them again. I began having suicidal thoughts. The more I thought about offing myself, the more I accepted it as being an okay thing to do. I wasn't religious, so I didn't have the thought of going straight to hell. I viewed it more as, if a goldfish were to die, where do you think it would go? I think it doesn't go anywhere, it is just dead, blackness, no more thoughts, like turning off a car for good. I thought about how my family would miss me, and how it would hurt them, but I was so depressed, unhappy, and discomfort by my progress in life and the fact I had no one. After a few weeks of dash study Celsius weather and brutal snow, I decided to get on a snowmobile, load up my snowshoes, take my rifle and go deep into the bush to end my mental suffering. I had given up on everything. I jumped on the sled at 8 o'clock a.m. The sun was brighter than ever. You couldn't look anywhere without squinting your eyes like an Eskimo. The sun reflected off the snowy landscape as if it were a mirror. With a full tank and a jerry can as a backup, I could go a long ways away. I let the ski do idle and get warmed up. I was thinking to myself that I may actually go through with this. I kept going over what ifs and buts in my head as if I were trying to talk myself out of it. I said fuck it out loud and jumped on the skidoo and let it rip. I took the tractor trail as far as it would go into the bush, it ends after a solid 45 minute drive, then turns into four wheeler and gator trails. I took a trail deeper and deeper. After a solid 2.5 hours of riding the trail stopped and did a U-turn. It was the end of the track. I then grabbed my rifle and put on my snowshoes. I quickly realized something. I hadn't written a note for anyone to find my body or even know what I had done. I knew that if my parents had no idea what had happened to me, they would wonder for the rest of their lives and it would tear them apart. I yelled out, F-U-C-K, and threw my rifle. I paced towards my sled and repeated what I said. I started to turn and remember I literally just threw my rifle, S-H-I-T, get off the sled and walk towards rifle, I bend down and grab it and stand up then froze stiff. A burst of adrenaline was injected throughout my entire body and turned my cold frame into a steel oven. There was a black figure in the distance hiding behind a tree watching me. It wasn't an animal. It looked like the shape of a man, but it wasn't a man. I ran onto my sled and hit the throttle. I ripped back home and didn't look back. To get back home, it only took me maybe 2.5 hours. I rode hard. I got inside the house, put coffee on and ate fried bologna with beans and toast. As I kicked out I kept that thing's image in my head and I was wondering what it was. How did it get there? For how long has it been here? Does it know I am here? How could it survive? Is it coming for me? Can it follow my snowmobile tracks? Does my grandpa know? I then decided to call my grandfather in Florida. He didn't answer his phone, he was probably chilling on the beach drinking beers. I thought fuck. I called my dad just to calm my nerves. He could sense something was off about me and asked me what was up. I told him I was out hunting and I seen something. I described what I seen and he went silent over the phone. He took a breath and he said, son, when I was a kid living on the farm, me and a girl went back to the lake for a swim. We got there on our bicycles in August. I had my rifle with me because of all the bears that passed through the land. After me and the girl were swimming around and laughing and doing our thing, she screamed and pointed across. I looked across the pound and there stood what looked like a burned up human being. He was charred up, had a bit of head hair. Eyes as bright and blue as I had ever seen. Its arms were so long, its hands nearly came to its knees. It screeched at us with the most insane volume I had heard that birds flew out of the trees. I ran out of the pond, grabbed my rifle and shot at it. It ran into the trees and me and the girl jumped on our bikes and gave it shit all the way home. That was the first and final time I had ever seen that thing, 
I actually hadn't thought of it in years and years until you told me that. You need to be really fucking careful son. In fact, why don't you just come home? It's boring out there anyways. I told him I was staying and enjoyed it here. I was lying now. More. Do you want it? I got off the phone with him feeling no better. The only difference was I could think clearer. I thought, if this thing is coming for me, it's going to take it a while by foot. I got time. I got the guns and put a loaded one in every room. Some had slugs, some had shells. I also had a hatchet that I sharpened to a very fine thickness with a stone grinder in the barn. If I swung at your wrist with one swift motion, it would probably take your hand right off, or at least leave it hanging by a thread. As nightfall drew closer I made one final meal and killed all the lights and left all the blinds open for good visibility and to make it hard for whatever is out there to see me inside. I went upstairs which was two bedrooms that had large windows and one walkout balcony. I thought this would be an excellent spot to watch and snipe. As I settled in to see if this thing would come I began thinking about what I was going to do earlier. I still was depressed, but because I was active and keeping my mind onto something, I didn't feel like offing myself anymore. Maybe that was it I thought. Keeping active, busy and productive, with a bit of excitement thrown and keeps your mind off shit that doesn't really matter anyways. Just as I was having a bit of a personal milestone, I heard heavy footsteps in the snow. I looked out the window and before my eyes stood that thing I had seen earlier, but now in full view. I got a strong feeling of nervousness and my abdomen tightened and barked at me as if I were about to shit myself at any moment from sheer fear. It was just as my dad described to me, piercing blue eyes, almost glowing. The moonlight reflected off of them like the cover of the dark side of the moon. It had the color and appearance of the grit in the bottom of your barbecue if you don't clean it much. I ran out on the porch to get a shot off. It darted off around the house before I could even lift my weapon. F-U-C-K, ran inside again. Ran to other window, I could see it again, just standing there like an idiot watching me. I turned the crank, and the window opened up. I said, who are you, it didn't respond, it just stared at me. I repeat, tell me who you are, or I am going to shoot you. It then said its name. It said in a slow, drawn out harsh hoarse voice. Jerd at my name, I said, what do you want with me? I am minding my own business, what are you doing here? Please leave me, it then walked closer to the house and looked up at me, my nose was filled with the most pungent odor ever, it then said, if you won't, I will, in that same exact voice that can almost not be described unless it was mimicked with some type of computer sound program. I said, do what, it said, kill yourself. You failed, my heart froze. I decided not to do it, it then stretched its arms out to the wall of the house and began scaling it like it was fucking Spider-Man. I yelled and panicked from sheer shock and fumbled my rifle, it fell right out of the fucking window and by that time it was feet away from the window, it reached its god awful hand into the window and cut my arm with its fingernail, I grabbed my hatchet and buried it in its forearm and it made a sound a bear makes when you shoot it. It fell to the ground on its side and I ran for the spare gun in the room. I came back to the window and it was running for the barn. I took a shot, but it didn't do much. This gun had a shell and it isn't ideal for the range I fired at. I pushed my dresser to the hole and pushed it down the stairs, I then pushed the bed to the hole and pushed it down the stairs, I then pushed a few end tables in the staircase. I essentially clawed it up so it couldn't get up there from the main floor. I know it can climb now but I'd prefer to only have to cover two sides than multiple sides. I locked the door and just kept my eyes and ears open. I didn't see it again. Daybreak came quick. I could see its blood droplets in the snow. I climbed over and pulled shit out of the stairs and investigated. It was nowhere to be found, I grabbed my rifle and followed the droplets. It went down the tractor trail. I walked for 10 minutes following this trail. I could see it go off even further and its foot tracks as well, I decided it wasn't worth it to go ahead and hunt it. It probably went as deep if not deeper the first time I had seen it. I decided it was time to leave this place for good. I went inside, 
grabbed my clothes, got into my car and started driving off. I never told my dad or my grandpa. I still have nightmares of these things and wonder how it knew what I was thinking or going to do. I've been trying to research other sightings and descriptions of it, but can find nothing unfortunately. I don't want to say it is a demon because I really don't know or believe in that religious crap. I don't know what it is, no idea. All I know is for the last 8 years since it has happened, I have had a slew of health problems and bad luck. I have night terrors of Jerdak in almost 95% of my sleeps. I have to take medications just to fall asleep. I think it may have been the nail that cut me when it reached into the window. I often wonder if it is still up there. I know that isn't a worthy ending to the story, but it is what it is, what else can I say? So what's up with the house now? Is your grandpa living there or what? My grandpa passed away four years ago, the property was sold to clear cutters by my dad and his sisters. As far as I know the house was knocked down, and they put up a small office and living quarters for the lumberjacks who clear cut there. This is near Chaplot, Ontario off the beaten path. That's a little unfortunate. Maybe you could pose as a reporter and call the clear cutter barracks or visit them and ask if anyone has seen anything. I actually did that maybe three years ago. The workers had already been there for a year. I actually said that I was a fisheries and wildlife technician for the region and that I had heard of a sighting of a creature, described as the one I encountered. They said they hadn't seen anything of the sort. You got to remember though. My grandfather's land had boundaries, but past those boundaries the bush simply continues on crown land for miles upon miles. It's basically a frontier. I somehow doubt it is dead because my dad had seen it, I had seen it over 25 years when he seen it, and it knew my thoughts. There is something about it that isn't natural. Also, I hammered it in the forearm with that axe, I know for a fact I broke its forearm bones because I heard them break, I also know the axe went all the way through its arm because the flat back of the axe was buried into its arm, if it's like you and me, that kind of wound in minus 25 celsius weather, it's highly possible it did die, but I don't know man. I think about it a lot. I sometimes wish like you guys have said, that I continued on and tracked it, but I was spooked, it was cold and I was shook to my core. I think it's best that you didn't continue. Sure it may have seemed like you heard it, but if this story is true and your dad saw it and now you too, this thing is obviously not aging very fast lol. The story was great dude, but man to man, bro to bro. Is it legit? Did this actually happen as you said it did? Also, you said you went back home, so surely your dad brought the topic up when you returned, right? How did that go? Yeah man, it did happen. Bro to bro never knew you could feel that kind of fear and worry up to that point. As I said before, I need antidepressants, sleep meds, and now I have a valve in my heart. I am only 28. I have no history of family health issues. I was an athlete growing up. I was an outdoorsman. It all went downhill when I left. I never told my dad or my grandfather. I thought my dad or my grandfather would want to go hunting for it. And I really didn't want them to get hurt or worse. LOL at PPL Google Mapping Shiplo. Come on, you're not going to see it on a satellite mat. OP here. Wow. I didn't know this story of mine would take off like it did. I am very pleased a lot of you believe me or at the least, enjoyed the story. I intentionally didn't make paragraphs to whoever complained about it. I just wanted to get it done quick. Got to take some bad with the good I suppose. Someone asked if I left all the furniture in the stairwell. I did. My grandfather found it all that way too. He freaked out about it. All I said was I didn't do it myself, some kids must have broken in and fucked shit up to be dicks. He bought it. Someone else asked if I found the hatchet, or took the hatchet for blood samples. 1. The hatchet was nowhere in sight. 2. I was only a kid, 20, I was scared, I was cold, I was alone. The last thing I was thinking was collecting blood from the snow for samples. 
Maybe if it happened now, I would have. But back then, I didn't know too much. I still haven't told my father or my grandfather. As I said before, look what has happened to me. I would hate for my dad or grandfather to face a worse problem. I know then, they would believe me. If they believe my story, they will go hunting for it. For some reason, I think their chances of finding it are possible, and for that, I don't want them to know. Maybe in 15 to 20 years I will tell my dad when he is too useless to bother. Snowmobiling for two hours is too long for someone up north. We used to go all day. Two hours isn't very long at all if you ride sleds often. To the rude guy that said, you can see clear cutting on Google Maps. I know that. I meant lol at expecting to see Jerdak on Google Maps. Easy now. What else? I still have no idea what it is, my nightmares have persisted. But because you guys have given me so much support as of late, you have made me feel somewhat cheery. Thank you guys. OP here. I have reviewed the stories of skinwalkers and it doesn't fit the description. I could see how some could connect some of the dots, but it definitely was not a skinwalker. Maybe it's worth mentioning, but when I locked eyes with it and spoke with it, I had the sixth sense suspicion I was speaking with something that was either ancient, yet seemed modern, if that makes any sense at all. I also had the feeling that although it was very human-like in the fact it had two legs, two arms and neck, head, and spoke English, that it most definitely wasn't a normal human being. I don't want to sit here and tell you it was a demon, because I really don't know. I should have asked I guess. Jurdak is definitely not a human being, and doesn't fit anywhere along the evolutionary line of humans. The arms for example are long and ape-like, while the rest of his body sounds gracile, rather than robust. It would make slightly more sense if he was robust with long arms. There's that, and the fact that he seemed intelligent. Either as intelligent as modern humans, or possibly more so, given the fact that he may have telepathic abilities. So that right there rules out the possibility of him being a survivor of a species of early Homo. No, he's something else entirely different from humans. A demon? I doubt it. Like skinwalkers, he doesn't fit the description. However, while not being a skinwalker, or a wendigo, they have some traits in common. This could mean that he may have been human at one point, probably a native, and gained his powers and abilities through some sort of black magic, much like how a wendigo, or a skinwalker would attain theirs. This would explain his intelligence, his telepathic abilities, his strange appearance such as lengthened arms and charred skin, and his obvious connection to nature. OP here, sorry for the wait. I have no problem showing on Google Maps the whereabouts of where it took place to Hunter. However right now, I am not going to bother because I am about to leave. Again, I have no idea what it was. It definitely looked more male than female, I couldn't see any genitalia, but it was a very large being, and had a deep harsh voice. Someone asked earlier if my dad brought it up when I got back. He did, I just told him about the first occurrence that I told him about on the telephone. I left it at that. I will talk to him about it in the future at some point. But to protect them, I will withhold the information. Hey stalker, hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. Since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.